We will begin now. This session is being recorded. If you um, like, you can turn off your camera. Um, okay, Dr. Lake, take it away. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the third year, sixth semester of the Power of Art for Social Transformation, Artivism Initiative. Uh, we've we've spoken at length about the way in which art is a form of human expression, has the power to open minds, to encourage empathy, and to breed understanding and move people to question the status quo and fight for change. It has toppled dictators and inspired revolutions, raised voices, and saved lives, given power to the powerless and purpose and direction to billions of people around the world. Such modes of expression are more important than ever as we've entered the turbulent third decade of the 21st century. Uh, this initiative, as we're going to hear today, serves as a platform for artivist presenters and student ambassadors to share their work, to inspire, and to challenge the audience to engage their sociological imagination and to see the world with fresh eyes. Through multimodal events, presenters have shown how art research, community outreach, and other creative endeavors serve as a means to transform the status quo. I'd like to introduce the co-founder of Artivism, R.G. Agilarakis, who will introduce today's speaker. R.G. I'm very happy to introduce and welcome here M. Jim Goose. Um, M. Jim took a course, an elective class, um, about a year ago, Art Behind Bars, uh, where she explored um, the benefit of the arts and then came up with this idea that she will be speaking about today. Her presentation is um, The Art of Words. Um, M.G. Limgus is a student at the Honors College at Adelphi University, majoring in psychology with a minor in sociology and art therapy. She hopes to one day conduct research about mental health in the Caribbean because she feels that many places, like in her home country, Haiti, mental health is not priority prioritized enough. Welcome, Mem Jim. We're so happy to have you here today. Thank you so much, RJ, for the introduction. Thank you so much for everyone that's here um, for your support. i um, going to share the screen. Okay. Okay, so um, this is uh, my presentation on um, my um, project that I started, Art of Words, um, and it was, th this project only came to life with, um, because of the Honors College at Adelphi that provided me with the summer fellowship and that was able to make um, what I thought was just going to be a simple project come into a full-blown, like, full-blown fellowship, something that I could apply and put into works and actually see it come to life. So a quick background um, of this project is that it all started with a class that sounded kind of interesting. Um, so in fall, in my um, sophomore year in Adelphi, I took this class called um, Art Behind Bars with Professor RG. And I took it because it, saw, it sounded art interesting. I was always someone that was interested in art and has a psychology major. I was like, I'm also interested in therapy. So I was like, art and therapy, it just makes sense for me to be in this class. But I never really um, knew what that was like, if art was actually like a certified therapy that people could actually study and um, apply and actually put into practice. And after taking the class, I started looking at art a different way. And as someone that grew up doing art, and many times when um, like I would struggle myself in, in my lifetime, I would go to art as a sense of release. But I never thought of it as something therapeutic. It was just something that like I was like I'm like I grew up in a house with artists, and it was something that just worked for me. So I did it. And um, just kind of started looking at it that way. It just all sort of fit, like fitting into the little pieces. And I became more and more interested the more that the class went on. And um, my inspiration for this was um, 
many projects that I have done myself, including the mass project, which I did in Professor Orji's class, where I was able to include words within my art. And um, one, one of the um, assignments that I did was blackout poetry, which is something that I'm not really familiar with, but you black out every other word on the page and you select a couple of words, you make a poem out of it, and then you draw a picture in the background. And um, I, I felt like it was just like fun, but there was so many things I was able to express about my poem when I was able to include the words and the art together. And that just made me fall in love with this technique that I would use and just, like, I feel like I was able to express myself more when I would include words within my art. And another um, inspiration um, for this project was Cuban Cubism, which I, first learned about in a honors um, modern and um, honor, honors modern condition class that I took with um, Professor Serbi. And it was just um, something that we learned about in class. And then one of our assignments was to write a poem. And I was like, how about if I took this poem and I rearranged it to make it look like what I'm trying to talk about. And um, I did this with um, Pablo Picasso's Major Lee. And um, it was a it was a um, it was an image that you could kind of see a woman holding a sort of like um, guitar in her hands, kind of an, um, an instrument like this. And I was like, how about if I take the words and just like arrange them to look like what I see in the picture? And that's kind of what I did in the bottom right corner there. And I was like, this just makes everything just come full circle for me. Like I can understand this poem more just by looking at it because it looks like what I'm talking about. And um, another, like the final thing that just really made me think about starting this project was the mask that I did with um, in Professor Orji's class, where she said on the outside of the mask to, to basically put what people see of you. And in the inside, put what you see yourself as and what you actually feel and what you actually are. And on the outside, I just wrote a bunch of like words. I just filled it up with words, as you can see. And I just um, started writing and it was like, writing for me has also always been therapeutic. So when I write, I just love to just like write anything, write everything down. And um, it was like the kind of girl that the world sees me as. But like on the inside, I just drew a picture of this girl that is not always the kind of girl that the world sees her as like she's not always like like peppy she's not always happy sometimes she has her downtime and that's completely okay and um it was just like the last thing that just made this project come full circle and made me really realize the power of combining art and words together into making something more expressive and something that I could feel like helps me understand myself better so the, pro the initial objectives for this project was um, I first really put this project together and our final and art um, therapy and our art behind boys um, class that I took with RG. And the goal of this project was um, to basically start your own organization. Like, what would you do? Like, what would you do if you could come up with like an organization? What would you do if you could um, create your own um, project? Like, what would it be? And I was like... I've never really heard of art, of words practice. Like every, we've all seen like the art works with like, um, you can see like a woman's face, but it's all like writing. And I'm like, that's as far as I've seen with like art and words put together. But there could be so many different ways that you could apply these two methods together. So um, I designed this project called Art of Words. I made a presentation about it to submit and I presented in class. And my objective was, for this project is to design an art program that encourages individuals to be loud or find their voice and create a picture that makes it impossible not to be seen or heard. This project was intended to add to the healing art making process that allows for self-expression, encourages emotional processing, art making as a diversion and has a means of communication. The focus was not simply on the individual but on community collaborations. The primary target audience was individuals with autism and how they would react to the project while collaborating with their families care and caretakers. Finally, this project was intended to create a beneficial safe space for those that experience difficulty in creatively expressing themselves. 
And um, the reason that my target for um, people with autism was, was I want, like the whole intention of this project was to be able to express yourself and not only to yourself, but more so to those around you, like your loved ones. And that's why this project was also a collaboration. And um, one of the things for that is because I remember like when I was little, the person that I, one of the person that I never really truly felt connected to was my sister, uh, my sister Rose, who who um, had autism and it was a struggle for her to communicate with us. And I, she, she wasn't really into art or um, writing and it was very hard to communicate with her. And I was like, if this project could help anybody that was in my situation be able to understand their loved ones, it would have done what I've intended it to do. So um, that was why the, um, the, autis the autism community was one of the, was one of the um, communities that I really wanted to work with just because I w wanted to help another family that kind of went through something like I did with my sister Rose. <clears throat> so the unexpected, things don't always go as planned. I'm pretty sure we all know that things don't always go as planned. And um, the first time I really saw the potential of this project was when Professor Orji, right after my presentation, her class was like, this could be something. This, this can really go far. Like this, you can, you can make this happen. And I've never really had someone tell me this about like uh, something that I planned. Like it was just like, it was a presentation. You know, like we do presentations in college all the time, but we just, we don't expect them to get out of being a presentation. We don't expect it to go any further than that. And it kind of like stuck in my head when she said that. And I was like, like maybe it could. I was like, maybe, 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 maybe it could. Like maybe there is some potential there. And when I saw that the um, like Adelphi was having a summer fellowship, I immediately contacted Professor RG. I was like, Professor RG, <laughs> there's this um, uh, fellowship in the summer and you get to do research. And I was like, and I thought about the project and um, I was like, you said that you, you think that there was some potential there. So I would love for you to be my advisor for this. And we got started on working on this um, fellowship, um, the application and everything and coming up with the essay, the project, um, like materials that we would be using and all of those um, different portions that we had to submit. And um, that was for the Adelphi University um, on its own. That was just for Adelphi. And then two days before um, the Honors College Fellowship was due, and it's something that you would get emails, like you get so many emails um, being a college student that you pay attention to a lot of them, but it's very hard to like maintain. So I finally saw the um, email from Honors College and I was like, is that like the same thing that I'm doing? <laughs> and I looked at it and I read it and I was like, oh, it is. And I, again, immediately emailed um, Professor RJ. I was like, so RJ, there's another one. I was like, should we up our odds? Should we um, go and see if, um, should we apply to both? You know, see if which one we can get. Um, hopefully we'll get one. And then she's like, oh, like, yes, absolutely, yes. And that was two days before the due date. So this was not the intended um, fellowship that I originally had applied for. And it was something very last minute. And um, it was, and, and then I was able to, since I already had the foundation from my previous fellowship, it was very easy to apply for the honors fellowship. And I um, put the, beats, the bits and pieces together, I rearranged stuff and then I submitted it. And then um, now I was just waiting <laughs> and kind of um, just waiting for an email, hopefully like we'll get one. And that's kind of how it went. And then I got the Honors College Fellowship and I did not get the original fellowship that I had intended to, that I, that I was originally going to apply for. And this just really made me um, think about many things because for a lot of this journey was unexpected. Like just from I'm um, going to um, Professor Orgy's class um, or behind bars, like it was, it was an elective. It was something that we all go through in college. We just take classes um, that's like 
this is an elective for my major, like I'll take it. It sounds kind of interesting, I'll do it. But it's all about having an open mind when you do these things, like when you take these electives and when you see these um, opportunities to just like go for it and just take it. And um, I was really excited when um, Dean Dynan uh, sent me the Honors College Fellowship and I forwarded to Professor Orgy and I was like, we got it <laughs> and it was a really really beautiful moment because um I was telling my family about it, it was really really great because like you never really know what's going to happen because it's a competitive thing to apply for anything so um just the fact that I was able to receive um the grant to participate and actually put my ideas into um into an actual research project was just absolutely amazing so um, upon receiving the Honors College Fellowship for the summer of 2023, in collaboration with Professor RG, we contacted several organizations about implementing my Auto Birds initiative. Several meetings took place via the Zoom and in person to, to introduce my initiative and schedule the workshops. The discussion included the vision and mission of the organizations, their history and focus groups. I created a lesson plan and activity for each project, collecting, purchasing, and assembling the supplies. We did group sessions and individual sessions. And that's when we also got in contact with our collaborators, which was Post Just Promise and Love Michael, two organizations that I hold to such high regards for um, their support during this fellowship and just their never ending encouragement because I do not think that I would have been able to just do the work that I have had I not had such great collaborators and people that were willing to help me like put my project into practice. So the workshops that we had done during the summer was um, beaded jewelry, tree collages, DIY um, pinatas, and traditional art. The first workshop we did was beaded jewelry. And this was a project that I had done with Love Michael. And this was one of the projects that we also did as a collaboration. And um, it was about, it, we were conducting jewelry making, which can be a symbol, a celebration of healing, spirituality, body image um, shaping, protection, prosperity, amongst other things. And this workshop was absolutely something that I did not expect to go as well as it did. And I saw how all of them were so very focused in what they were doing and picking out the words and picking out the colors, the, the beads, colors that they wanted to use. And it was just a very fun and special moment, just having to work with um, the people at Love Michael and just sitting down and just really talking to. There was a lot of conversation going, which made me really happy when I got to um, get to know a couple of them, whether it was the staff or um, the Love Michael guys. It was just absolutely, it was a beautiful moment. And I definitely felt like they were able to focus and really try to express themselves, like in the sense of using the colors that they felt like they were being drawn to and I was spelling out the words that they wanted to do. And it was it was very beautiful moment. And that was the first workshop that I ever conducted with this um, project that I was doing. And the second workshop that we did was the tree collages. And tree collages, um, which are a good way to express um, what we want to say through imagery from, from cut out magazines, catalogs, and other sources, containing pictures and words from lettered stickers, old books, and other found materials. The idea of the tree was to represent a foundation for them to plan their goals and future aspirations. So um, instead of doing just like a regular um, collage, I wanted to do a tree collage because having a foundation, like with any like thing in our lives is very important. And um, I feel like just from the tree roots to like growing it up and just like having the collage there, it was very, I feel like it was more of a, powerful and more meaningful approach than just having a collage. And they also had like a blast with this. There was a bunch of materials to choose from, a lot of words, and um, they were able to just like put stuff everywhere. And <laughs> that was the intended, um, that was the intention of the workshop. And um, another thing that it was very important for this project was that there, was no such thing as perfection. Like art is not always perfect. Like some of the best um, stuff that 
I think has been made through art were like especially like even for me were things that I just like was playing with like something you just like did in random and that that's like the beauty of art therapy and why I was so drawn to it is because I grew up like within a house of artists and I always believed art had to be perfect and after taking um, art behind bars I was like it really doesn't like it just has to mean something to you like that's that's the whole purpose of art it just has to mean something to you and I wanted to share that with people and that was the real intention of how, why I wanted to pursue this project so much. And this pro this tree collage I also did with um, Love Michael as well as Pollution Promise um, during one of our workshops. And um, it was um, also the first time that I had gotten like a commentary about this. And um, I remember one of the girls, and I'm not gonna say who it was, but um, I remember one of the girls after the workshop was like, um, told me she's like I really like this workshop because um, I felt like I was able to have more options and how I to express myself in the sense of I could use like words or I could use images and it it goes both ways like both of them were very expressive things to do and just like having the option was able to just like made me feel like I was able to just put more stuff on there and express myself in a more open way than I would have if it was just like a art collage and that just really just like kept me going, knowing that this was something that people were interested in and it was something that people could have fun with and also something that could change the art making process for people that were doing it. And our last workshop, which I did with um, Love Michael was the DIY pinatas. And that involved the creation of a pinata, a uh, decorated figure or shape containing toys or candy in addition to the traditional pinata, we also thought to add written notes inside the pinata to add more sentimental touch. And this was, I think, one of the crowd favorite um, workshops at Love Michael. And um, it was it was an idea that um, Miss Lisa had actually brought up to me. She's like, you know what? Like, we never really know like what to do in celebration for when there's like a birthday like an event going on like we should do like something like celebratory and like something like a pinata and I was like that's that's wonderful like that's an amazing idea and I got home and um I started looking up like I was like how do I make a pinata <laughs> I said yes to it but now how do I do this and um I'm very fortunate to have um <clears throat> a sister that works in retail and was able to provide me a whole lot of boxes and crushed down boxes that I was able to um, bring. And um, I brought the supplies and the materials. And this was this was when I really felt like I got to know um, the people at Love Michael because they were, they wanted to get their hands into it. They wanted to create the pinatas and they, were, they just like had so much fun with it. And they were so engaging and the colors that they were doing, the choices and just like their individualities and people were making ice cream, there was tacos involved, a lot of donuts, a lot of candies. And they were just so open to just like the different types of um, pinatas that you could make and so open to like cutting out the cardboard and putting the pieces together. And it was just absolutely, like an absolutely amazing moment. And um, we, this workshop actually took two days to actually do because um, <laughs> actually making the pinata took a long, long time, but the process was completely and a hundred percent worth it. And um, I remember just like <clears throat> this um, particular workshop was something that like, we kind of like did it together. Like me and the staff at Love Michael were like in collaboration because I wasn't really familiar with the pinata idea. And it was something that I was doing for the first time as well as, um, you know, the person, the um, members at Love Michael that were doing the workshops with me and the staff were very encouraging. And it was a really good collaborative moment because we had to help pick out some stuff, like help cut out the boards. And it was just really, really beautiful. And um, at the end of the um, project, like I brought some candies um, per the request <laughs> and try to get um, the idea of which candies everybody liked and put a little something in everything. And um, I was like, what would be really, really sentimental is if 
instead of like just having like candies and toys, which is like the traditional thing of a pinata, you could have like written like since like letters for like your loved one. Like if this was a collaborative thing and um, they were all just like doing this for one person, it would, I feel like it would mean so much more to just have anything written inside of it, just to tell that person how special they are to you and um, the importance of this person in your life. And I just thought it was, it was a really good way to just kind of like blend two things together, like um, the cards that we all love to receive from our loved ones, as well as a wonderful present, which is like a pinata, which is something that's fun and something creative. And um, yeah, this was one of our last projects and one of the most fun projects that we did just because it was really getting your hands in there and creating it and putting your thoughts in it. So this is a quote that is very, pretty sure we've all seen it or heard it, um, is a picture is worth a thousand words. And that is a hundred percent true. And um, one of the initiatives of this project was to not hide behind our pictures that we paint of ourselves. Because many times as an artist, especially during like um, a time when you do not want people to know what you're feeling or what you're trying to express, it is very easy to hide what you're trying to say in a, in a artwork. And it's also very easy to hide what you're trying to say in like a creative piece, like a um, short story or like a poem. But when you put the two together, it's like there's no place to hide. And that was one of the beautiful things about this um, project that I really, really liked because that's someone that would hide like in between the lines and I'd write like, you know, scenarios and people would just be like, I think this means this, I think this means that. And I was like, no, but <laughs> not really sure. Like, I don't want to share what it actually means. And then it's like, it makes it impossible to not be able to tell people what you mean when there's like a picture and a word together and like in one work. And I think it really just like, it's, it really just enhances self-expression and what you wanted to say, because that's what art is. And also that's what creative writing is. So art of words versus traditional art. So um, in one of the workshops that we did at uh, Felicia's Promise, which is um, women's health, we talked about what sex was. And um, I did this little short um, poem and I drew it in the shape of like the uterus to like remind me of like the workshop and what we discussed and what we talked about. And um, it just, the difference between like art of words and traditional art, which is um, we did a lot of traditional art of Michael. And I was able to see that they, they were kind of like not into just like, painting anymore like they were just they wanted to like do like the collages they wanted to do the jewelry they wanted to do the pinatas where there was so much more diversity in what you what in what you could do and so much more options in what you could include in the project compared to just doing like a painted board or just doing like a regular collage and not using words for it and um, I think that's one of the beautiful things about this summer workshop was that it really introduced a new like way of doing art to the um, participants of it. And that was something that I really wanted to show because it's something that I've done on many occasions unconsciously and something that has been very effective for me personally. And it was definitely something that I wanted to share and I wanted to bring people's attention to and just have them really just like see the importance of just like adding some words in there. And it could mean so much more when you just add some words into your art pieces. And um, it creates more dimension. It creates more vulnerability. And those are all things that can help us express ourselves more. The project supporters of um, this was Miss Felicia, um, Dr. Lisa, Professor RG and um, the Honors College at Adelphi. And um, <clears throat> this project was not going to be, was never going to be able to happen without these um, wonderful ladies, um, these wonderful women that I met, um, and also the Honors College, because it's, it's very, um, it's very important that when, even like as a college student, when you have an idea for it to be supported to that level, that it was supported for me. 
because um we all have I, we all like have these um thoughts and we have these um like um ideas in our heads but like we never really know how far we can take it and that's one of the beautiful things about this was that it taught me to just like go for it like there's nothing really like holding you back and to just take advantage of so many opportunities um is even like something that was unexpected like something that was so seems so far away from you but you can do it and just um having a contact with um Miss Felicia and Dr. Lisa and just having their support and um, being able to schedule the workshops and just having them trust me to like, you know, put these into works. And it was just, and like also providing me with people to help me throughout the process because they knew that um, I would need like that support system. And I really did. Um, it just meant a lot to me, just knowing that I wasn't doing this alone. And um, that was, if there's you know one thing that i really want you to take away from this presentation is like just go for it honestly like just go for it like there's nothing really like holding you back from like any opportunity and even if you do not think that you can do it just like just go for it because you you can't like there's so many so many things that we can do that we just talk ourselves out of and um i think just having these amazing people in your life that are encouraging you to just take that step further. And um, like these three amazing women that I met um, throughout the journey and also the Honest College who's always been very supportive of me and just like my decisions and just always going to be updated on what I wanted to do and my next steps, which has always been just so nice to have and great to know you have people in your corner. Um, that is it. So um, I just wanna say thank you for um, listening to this presentation and just, um, giving me your time and just getting to know this amazing project that I was able to put into words and that meant really a lot to me and I was able to learn so much from it during the summer so thank you thank you I'm Jim before we um, take it over to a uh, discussion I just want to remind everyone of some upcoming events um, tomorrow, Adelphi University, uh, the Adelphi University Garden City Campus will be having um, the uh, Fall Arts Festival. It will be kicked off by Artivism, the CJ Club, um, um, Arach Ar Arachne's um, Web, I think it is, sorry, um, the Artivism Club. Um, Treby Johnson will be coming on campus. She's a collaborator. She was a presenter at Artivism, I think two years ago. She will be um, facilitating a workshop. Uh, uh, the next day is the actual festival with Chalk Up, a lot of events happening. Uh, the theater department, the uh, criminal justice program, the art department, and all the different other departments on campus will have events going on. And uh, the closing event will be, I believe, at 345 near the Rose Garden, where there will be a collaboration between Artivism, CJ, the clubs, uh, the theater department, and they'll, there'll be Boal exercises and Trebby's works that will be created from the workshops the previous day and the day of will be assembled on a mandala and there'll be a kind of closing ceremony. Next Monday, October 16th, Dave Gusak will be presenting his creativity heals in an uncreative place Art and Art Therapy in Prison. Um, Dave Gusak is a published author. He's written several books and works in uh, several prisons throughout uh, Florida, the state of Florida and other states. And he's pretty much worked around the world. So please join us for that. Um, for more information on artivism, you can Google just artivism transformation. Um, email us at artivism at adelphi.edu. Thank you, M. Jim. This was beautiful. Any questions, any comments? Thank you, Dr. Liberatori, for all your support. And Felicia, thank you, Felicia, for having our students, giving them the opportunity to work with you. We've had several actually do internships and volunteer, and we hope to bring that to also Love Michael with Dr. Liberatori. Um, any questions, comments? Um, I just want to say uh, congratulations, and Jim. It was, I really appreciated being able to listen to your presentation, and uh, you're definitely 
uh, loved here in Southampton and uh, loved to um, also offer you the opportunity to do something in Tribeca. So I think, I think you, um, you know, I saw your confidence build as you, um, every time you came out. So of course it's ner you're ner it's nervous. Uh, you, it's normal to be nervous when you're trying something new and you're meeting new people. Um, but the staff and uh, all the professionals here really enjoyed it, uh, having you and uh, we miss you, so. <laughs> Thank you so much, I miss you guys. It was a pleasure to just work with you guys. Thank you so much. I would like to echo all of that and just thank you for the opportunity of having you be a part of Felicia's Promise as an intern then, but now as a full-on volunteer. You come with so much compassion and heart to everything that you do, which you're already an amazing spirit, right? You're intelligent, you're driven, we know all of that, but your heart is everything. And, and we are just so glad to know you. The girls love you, adore you. Everything you bring to Felicia's Promise is intentional and we are grateful. Thank you, Miss Felicia. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. And I love you guys as well. Thank you. So happy to still be part of Felicia's promise. <laughs> you guys can't get rid of me. <laughs> <laughs> there are several comments. Well done, M. Jim. I'm not crying. <laughs> the lake, I know. Um, amazing <laughs> job. Yes. Perfect. Thanks. I'm just so proud of you, M. Jim. I really, really am. I, I knew you would be able to do it, do it all. Um, I was so happy to be there for you. You know, I'm always there for you for whatever you do. You have my full support always, even beyond Adelphi. Um, yes, any other questions or comments? Thank you all for being here today. Yes, yeah, Stephanie. Hi, I'm Jim. Wonderful, Hello. absolutely Hello. wonderful. I wanted to, I'm not sure how many uh, students we have, but for future reference, when I might pull you in to try to uh, try to recruit other students who might want to work with either of these organizations, mm -hmm. and what would you say to students who are a little nervous about getting involved, but are thinking about uh, organizations like the two organizations you work with? How how would you phrase it su such that they would feel more inclined to want to participate? Um, so definitely with um, something that I think is very prominent in both of the organizations that I've worked with, is for um, Felicia's Promise as well as with Michael, is um, that although you are volunteering um, or just like being part of it, you're not doing it by yourself. Um, and I think that's one of the beautiful things about um, both of these organizations that they always have your corner and they always like serve as a support system for you. And I never like once like during my fellowship felt like I was doing it by myself. Like um, whether it was like just having Professor Orgy like texting me or like saying, I'm Jenny got this. Or just having Miss Felicia saying, um, yes, like you are wonderful. Like you got like you or you got this, like I like I can't wait to see you. Um, there's always and um, there's always words of encouragement there, and also um, Miss Lisa just providing me with like her staff every single workshop. It was just absolutely amazing. Um, so I know a lot of um students, like for myself, like speaking for myself was like there was like a nervousness of just like going into something that you haven't done before, and just knowing like can I take on this by myself but you're not taking it on by yourself. There's an amazing support group in each and every single one of these like organizations that was provided that I worked with. Um, and I, I think that's something that will really stick to the students, just knowing that they're not gonna be by themselves and there will be like a support system there. Yeah. <laughs> yes, so thank you, I'm Jim. Um, at um, Artivism, um, we ask the presenter to give us a key takeaway. What would be your key takeaway for your presentation today? Did I tell you how proud I am of you, Andrew? <laughs> I'm so proud of you. <laughs> you have. <laughs> and I'll keep telling you. <laughs> Thank you, RJ. Thank you. <laughs> um, I would say um, a key takeaway from this presentation is to go for it. 
and that's mostly aimed at other college students like me and also it does I don't I don't think it really matters like what age group or like which state of life you're in but to go for it like the opportunities are like endless and to really just take advantage of like your support systems because it's very important to have those as well so just just go for it <laughs> there's nothing to really lose when you just go for it yeah <laughs> Um, RG, I would like to say that, you know, you you are somebody that I trust very much in connecting me to students um, who have um, who are taking this really seriously. I'm very protective of the individuals who we're working mm -hmm. with. Um, and uh, MGM, we had long conversations before she came and then she came uh, with you, I think, going slowly and building up trust. And I clearly could um, could feel that M. Jim was a young woman who mm -hmm. is um, comes with. Um, she had really she shared her experience, so she showed um, a willingness to be open about her intentions. And then she was extremely reliable and um, you know, always um, did exactly what she said she was going to do. And she expressed what her needs were in terms of how many people she would think should be in a class, but was willing to modify that based upon her experience. And then and the last time was just open to another idea, um, which was the pinata idea, but, you know, just to have that rapport building each time. So uh, RG, you think you do a really good job of also um, helping pair the right person with the right organization. So I'll look you know, I'll always, that's always means a lot as well. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you for mm -hmm. being there for our students, right? They're, they're our future. You know, we yep. um, want them out there, you know, working, getting this experience. And it took a lot of bravery for M. Jim too, right? I mean, yeah. you were second year, I think, yeah. right? It was just pretty early on. And when she, you know, uh, emailed me, do you think I could do it? I'm like, of course you can. <laughs> <laughs> And you did. <laughs> I admire you. I, I I am not only proud of you, but I have a lot of admiration for you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Madam Jim. And thank you, Dr. Lake. Um, thank you to Carolina Cambernaro Varela, who could not be here with us today, to our sponsors, Sync for Hope, Adelphi University, Goddesman Libraries Teachers College, Jennifer Govan from Goddesman Libraries, Monica Eunice, and Camille Zamora from Sync for Hope. Um, thank you, everyone, and we hope to see you here next week. Have a good evening. Thank you. Thank Have you, Jim. Thank you. <laughs> Bye -bye. Thank, Thank you, so Felicia. Much. Thank you. It's Thank so good you. to see you. <laughs> and Tracy, have a good yeah. night.